What's up, everybody? This is Kenny Cummins here of Chilling with Kenny C, working on TMVCafe.com on a leap day. Once every four years, a day like this usually happens. So that's pretty cool. So joining me, you know, representing that real hip hop, representing that West Coast, um, talented MC doing his thing. Uh, he goes by the name of Dodo Unknown. He's with me right now. Welcome to the show, man. What's happening? West West Coast in this West Side in this thing. You know what I'm talking about? How, how, how you feeling? I'm I'm good, man. I'm great. Yeah, man. Chilling. Yeah, man. That's good to hear, man. Great to have you on the show. Of course, I appreciate I've you heard, having me. Of course, I've heard of you through a fellow West Coast hip hop artist. Uh, Henny Holyfield. Yeah, uh, that's the brother. That's I, my homie. So yeah, y'all did the sweater song, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. So that was mm -hmm. my introduction to you. And I said I got to get this dude on the show, and yet here we are. Uh, oh, yeah. So, and with that being said, man, um, how did you get started into music? How what got you into being a, an artist? Uh, I think at a at a very young age, I was always into um, like the performance aspect. You feel me? Like uh, every time, every time we'd have family parties, I would always be trying to sing in front of everybody and knowing all the songs. And moms and pops would have me get up and sing, and 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 it started like that. And then, you know, I really got into hip hop when uh, it was one of my older brother's friends. He had a tape and he was listening to it. And this is like tapes. So I said, that's a long time ago. So he's listening to a tape and he let me hear it. And it was um, some like West Coast, like uh, DJ Pooh, like old, like old school shit. And uh, ever since then, I just, I just got on it. And then I really got into, I used to watch like, you know, Rap City every day. I used to watch CMC every day, you know what I mean? So I really was more into East Coast artists like uh, Rock M, D Nice, um, KRS One, stuff like that, because well, everything I was watching on TV was, you know, I mean, I didn't really get like the the West Coast stuff. I got all the East Coast stuff. So as my brother's friend gave me that tape, then I got turned on to like music from where I'm from, and it just, you know, it inspired me, and I've always been writing ever since, you know. Yeah. So for the younger listeners out there he mentioned tapes cassette tapes <laughs> um, yes cassette back, tapes. that's 90s you know what i'm saying i still yeah. got some cassette cassettes from my younger years like i'll be like recording music to, uh, through the radio station you know uh -huh. so that was probably the only way i can hear the music like i wasn't getting it through the internet obviously you know internet wasn't right. as was it? Uh, it wasn't as big and out there like the way it is now. So the only way I can listen to hip hop was through the cassette and recording on a radio station. Even if you hear the same song twice in an hour, I say, you know, I gotta record. All you be songs. waiting. You be waiting for that song to come on so you yeah. can hit record and be like, oh, you yeah. got it. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah, like my, yeah. My first, my first time like really recording like raps music. Um, was well, I started out with like my friends, like we used to do like like for our own variety show and just record yeah. it. Like, you know, we do like jokes and skits and funny stuff. And then when and that was like on a karaoke machine. But then like when I got a little bit into like the like eighth and ninth grade, um, me and my homies would like take a tape and you know they'll leave like at the end of a beat, they'll leave like eight, eight bars or eight measures. So we would take that tape and when another tape and loop it. And make a loop of that eight bars. So, like, by the time it was done, it was a recording of a recording of a recording of a recording. So the quality was hella shitty, but we didn't know what we was doing. So yeah. we recorded it like that, and then we didn't have a microphone. So we found out if you could plug a, a headphones into the microphone jack, then you could use one of the headphones as a speaker. I mean, as a mic. So that's how we recorded it, and then we recorded with doubles and ad libs so so I, like i said it was already a recording of a recording of recording then i did doubles then i did ad libs <laughs> so by the time it was done it just sounded muffled and it sounded messed up you know what i mean but to us yeah. it was it was you know that's how we did it so that that tells you how challenging recording a song was 
back in those days. You know, technology right, yeah. is, is lovely now, but back it's so then, easy. Yeah, it's but back then it's you had to do literally everything. You had to re-record everything. You had to do all yeah. sorts of tricks. You know, it was. And you got to think about it too. Is that is that back then, if you wanted to do it, you really had to do a lot. You know, it wasn't so easy, so accessible. So like, wasn't everybody trying to record raps? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you had to really want to do this and really want to make something out of it. Yeah. So absolutely, man. So. As far as you, man, I see that your latest single is White Hand. It came out yeah. July of last year. Um, dope track. Thank Got you. a chance to play it several times. I've heard um plethora of your uh, recent music. Um, you're going in with the bars and stuff, so I definitely dig that. So for those that's been anxiously awaiting for new music from you, uh, what you got in store this year? Uh, you got any oh, new music on the way? Yeah, yeah. This this year is is twenty four, so we calling it the Mamba year. So it's the Mamba mentality all year long. So everything that I did prior to that, I'm trying to elevate and do more. So I got um, a dual album project coming. It's called um, Double Feature. And um, basically, like, the, the concept around it is like a drive-in theater. And I don't know if you're familiar with the, the album that I dropped, like, two years ago, my Humphrey Dogart pro pro yeah. project. That was, like, you know, me getting into R&B type styles, more pop type, type music. So I created, like, an alter ego, the Humphrey Dogart, right? So with uh, the idea with the new album is it's called Double Feature. So it's, like, if you're going to a drive-in theater... On one on one one thing is playing uh, a movie called Kill and it's starring Dolly Unknown and it's all the bars and the horror shit and, and the shit that everybody like loves like that and then if you want to go over to this other family more oriented flick it's called uh, Counter Melody starring Humphrey Dogart so I'm releasing them separate but then we're gonna do um, a special like um, release and where you can get the whole. Both both albums, all the special artwork, special boxing, merch that comes with it, like a whole special package for like the whole double feature album. But I'm releasing single all this year. I'm just gonna release single after single after single for it and kind of waterfall them. So then when the album comes, now you get all of it, you know. That's dope. That's definitely a good approach, especially, you know, coming into this year fully focused and ready to put out a lot of um, material there. So you mentioned the Humphrey Dogart project, very unique experience, you know, with the musical styles and everything. What was that like working on Humphrey Dogart? What was it like working on that project? Um, um, if I'm being honest, like, I feel like that is my most well together, put well put together project ever um from the song quality to the the conscious uh community uh, i'm talk, talking about issues real issues um just the way the whole thing came together is i just i've always really been into r&b like i said i used to sing at my my family events and stuff and i'll tell everybody like i'm platinum in the shower like in the shower i got like 17 platinum albums you know what i'm saying i'll be into who yes and everything when i'm in the shower but i've always loved it so i wanted to try something different i think as an artist if you don't push yourself to do other things and as i'm getting older i'm trying to remarket myself rebrand myself i can't really rap about the same things so i wanted to try something different and um I went into, into it and I, what's unique about that project is I recorded the whole thing during COVID. So it was like a special time that everybody's going to remember. It has like this nostalgia to it, like the time that the, mu that the music was put together. And um, it talks a lot about like a personal situation that I went through. I went through a divorce that, that got real crazy. And it talks about that. And it's kind of ba loosely based around that. Um, but it was... Like I said, like uh, to me, if you are really gonna be a fan of my music, uh, you have to get into that too. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot, of, I lost friends over doing an R&B album. Like, oh, you falling off? You ain't shit. Blah blah blah. Because I wanted to do something different. You know what I mean? So I I knew that my fan base would kind of be taking a step back because of the fact I'm always very lyrical, more 
um, backpack rap, in your face, battle rap type of style to do something like this. It takes someone that's going to be a real super fan of Doe that's going to love that. Because if they love this and that, they're going to love everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, you know, that's, I respect you for even going that route. Uh, and, you know, and, you know, in life, not just music, but in life, you follow your heart. You follow what you what you feel at the time. You feel like, you know, let me go a different approach here and, and, and let's see, you know, how I feel about it per se. I mean, we we seen Andre three thousand did a flute out. Mm -hmm. We seen right. um Lil Wayne did a rock out. We seen um Lil John the you know, yeah, Lil John did a meditation album. Now seen, <laughs> I didn't. I never heard about that. That's yeah, that that caught me by surprise too, and, and I heard about it just before the Super Bowl. I'm like, I, I I can understand. Maybe I understand it. Like sometimes with all that energy, you gotta calm down a little bit. So right. You know, <laughs> so I guess I that, think though with. Yeah. I think though, as being an artist, in order to I don't say be great or to in order to do something that nobody's ever done you got to try some shit you're uncomfortable with yeah you gotta you gotta kind of go out on a limb sometimes and if you just play it safe the whole time it's like you're gonna get caught in that mold of what everybody thinks that genre music is or what you're supposed to be and I I don't look at myself as like a rapper I'm an artist like I'll, I'll make I got a country song you know what I'm saying like I'll make a like it, it depends on how the music made me feel excuse me, depends on how the music made me feel, I'm going to go in that direction. I just am based in hip hop because that's how I started and that's where my writing started. But as far as like I've written R&B songs, I've written country songs for people. I've done all kinds of ghost writing and stuff like that to where I'm not, I don't consider myself just like one type. You know, like, like a lot of times people want to do features with me or producers want to work with me. They think, oh, well, they've heard right hand and they try to just give me beats like that. And it's like, I always try telling like, give me everything because you never know what's going to catch my ear. And I'll be like, oh, well, let's, let's do a flute song or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just, however the music talks to me is where I, I go with it. Yeah, it, it, it definitely shows how versatile you are as an artist, right? You, you know, you go into a producer and say, hey, just don't just give me certain type of beats. Give, give me everything you have available right. and let's see what we can work with and uh, a lot of times it'll be a beat that they didn't think i'd like that i love you know what i mean so yeah it usually be like that sometimes it usually be that one beat that people are like oh i don't know about it then you listen to it it's almost well, like, like the producer the, hates it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like oh man i made that shot with drunk i was like eh, that's a slap let me get that you know what i mean like, <laughs> So yeah, uh, sometimes I feel like every producer they got that one beat that they think nobody's gonna touch, and then somebody right. ends up with it. So, uh, well, I mean, like case in point, you you brought up the ugly sweater song. Yeah. Like that's a that's a perfect example where me and Ham were talking about the Mariah Carey money that comes every Christmas. Like, yeah. How do we tap into that? You know what I'm saying? Like, and then we made that song. So it's like I don't want to be limited by. A certain style or genre. I just, I just want to make art. You know, that's all it is. Well said, man. Be on the lookout for those upcoming double feature project. It's coming. It's Hell gonna yeah. give you. He's gonna give you um, half spitting bars. He's gonna give you some singing, some R and B type tunes. So he's gonna give you everything with this project. Yeah. So he's coming. You know, you and know. me and and you speak. You spoke of Henny, myself yeah. and Henny Holyfield. We have a um a podcast called Top Shelf Radio, and we're uh, currently filming right now. And we're gonna start dropping episodes in April. And it's like a radio show meets the Tonight Show. So we have like comedy sketches, SNL type stuff, along with playing music and you know tapping in with our fan base. That's dope, man. So speaking of Henny, you know. Obviously, like you're an independent artist, you know, you you put in you're doing all this on your own, doing the music the way you want to, things of that nature, networking with people, 
um, linking up with different artists. <clears throat> and Holyfield, I know him online for a couple of years now. He's very, very talented dude. Um, <clears throat> was it, you know, as an independent artist, it's good to have some like um, similar minded artists, you know, different, you know, different approach, which is similar interests per se. So, you know, y'all doing this podcast together, for example, SNL sketches, uh, a variety of stuff. So was it like, you know, linking up with a guy like, like Henny Holyfield, whether it's music, whether it's podcast, it wasn't like uh, chopping up with him. I mean, that, that dude's my brother, man. Like we, we have such a, a, a connection, a bond that like, I, we're, we're, we're to on the road to this shit. Like, um, he, I, like I'm originally from Fairfield, California, which is, I would say like 45 minutes, um, east of Sacramento, right? And it's it's like right in the middle of San Francisco and Sacramento, 45 minutes each way. So where I came from, I had an influence of like Bay Area artists and I also had an influence of SAC, but I've always graduated more towards Sacramento artists. Um, Brother Lynch Hung was one of my favorite artists. Sebo was one of my favorite artists. So my presence in Sacramento would not be anything un until I met Henny Holyfield. So I met him and he started putting me on shows in Sacramento. So then just from that, we started getting to know each other. Then we did a couple songs together. Then we started, then the, the, I, I've known him, I'm, I'm saying probably 13 to 15 years. And, you know, he's always been super solid. So it's easy to work with him. So me and him, we do, we had the podcast this last summer. We just planned our own um, independent tour called the West Coast Love Tour. Uh, we did that and we went from uh, Vancouver all the way down to L.A. or the whole West Coast um, with a bunch of other dope artists that came with us. Um, Scourge, KO, a a AT, my brother Highway. Uh, we all put our money together, our heads together and did it. And that's kind of like the the way Henny is. Henny is like the the great motivator. Like he can get people together. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he he has his contact with you let me and you'd be able to talk you know what i'm saying like yeah. he's like that um and i just try to soak that up from him every time i'm around him and we get to do things it's like just how he's able to tap in with with everybody like out, out in sacramento he's like no you know what i'm saying like this is especially from he did this podcast before i did i didn't come along to the end of it and then we had to kind of change our situation now we're starting to get brand new again but it's just him and i but working with dude is like phenomenal because he's like like he's like like i am he's versatile like he has that he just dropped a single called go grandma and it's a song about grandmas and it's fire you know what i mean and we have the ugly sweater we have realize your dope that we put together and him and i are also working on a project called that hand dope so it's like a bunch of songs that me him and i have just done together that are all going to be on a project called that hand dope so um it's it's been he's a phenomenal artist and, and a great friend and somebody I call when I'm like down in the dumps and I need somebody to pick me up. That's my man. You know what I'm saying? Like that's my brother to the end. Shout out to Henny Holyfield. Shout out to yes, the sir. West Coast. Shout out to the Bay Area, Sac Town. What up? I know the Kings out there doing their thing. Light light the beam, baby. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Mike Brown doing a really good job. It's good to see him. Like get him an actual coaching opportunity oh he, he. <laughs> so, yeah so he, he repping for the kings there the bay area uh i like De'Aaron fox you know yes sir he, he's legit um and and, and plethora of those guys on that team so, malik monk that malik monk is my guy bro yeah. he just go crazy on people so right. i live in kentucky i'm well i'm surrounded by kentucky basketball fans all the time so you got you got some dogs and Monk and, and Fox, you know. I, oh, and yeah. I see them up close. So um, you know, they Mike Brown, good for him getting a coaching job like that and seeing some guys like resurgence in Sacramento. Right. Um, I remember Chris Weber, I remember Doug Christie, I remember Mike Bibby, those teams that was in the Western Conference Finals. You know, so it's we got Sacramento fucking basketball. Robert Ory. Yeah. Robert Ory killed us. <laughs> that shit still hurts, bro. That shit still hurts. Big shot, Bob. That's, that's just 
fact that he lives up to that name every single time. He really does. Uh, so check out Doe the Unknown. Check him out on Instagram at Doe the Unknown. Check him out on Facebook. Double Feature Project is coming. And he also just mentioned a uh, joint album with Annie Holyfield featuring a collection of songs they did together. That's coming as well. So like you said, man, he's in for a mumba mentality year. He's coming with so much music on the horizon. So uh, stay tuned for that. It's great to chat with you, though, on, on the show. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I'm looking forward to double feature, man. It's going to be an incredible yeah. project. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate, uh, you know, you giving me the opportunity to be on your platform, platform and let people know about me and my music out in Kentucky. You know what I'm saying? Well, let, let me know when we come out and do some shows, bro. Let's yeah. let's let's network. Let's get it moving. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Man. Um, we, we, we got a solid um, hip hop scene in uh, Kentucky, you know, and I'm not just talking Jack Harlow and ESTG. We got some solid local artists that's really on the let's grind. Go, man. Let's this. work something out. Yeah. Let's send it up. I'll definitely get in touch with my friends and see, and we'll see what we can do with that. Um, oh, yeah. You take care, man. You enjoy your night. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, man. Thanks again. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. All right. You have a good night. Yep. All right.